people, it's our Thwomp here, and welcome to episode 25 of Ace Attorney Investigations. Last time, we basically stumbled, we fa were investigate, we were investigating, basically, Mackerel, the defendants, and Baron Ferry, the prosecutor's dead bodies, and we're starting to form theories involving fountain pens, and gun wounds, and knife stabbing. I guess there's not much left to investigate, huh? They really did kill each other. No, we can't conclude that quite yet. There's still something I find very peculiar here. A theory that they simply killed one another is too simplistic in this case. In fact, there's actually a contradiction that shows there's another possibility. No way, pal, really? Hmm, I suppose I will just have to show you the conflict in this crime scene. I won't rest until I've inspect inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Simple. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? Now we come face to face with the contradiction I spoke of, and it is this! Mr. Faraday used his left hand to write it with his fountain pen. Ergo, he is left-handed. And yet, the handgun is in his right hand. Don't you find it all that the left-handed Mr. Faraday would hold the gun in his right hand? Because, as we all know, ambidextrous people do not exist. Yeah, and plus, not to mention, just really, the thing is, some people do, basically, some people do things better with their other hand. For example, I, I'll typically push large objects, like, I'll basically push a bike with my left hand, like, I'll stand on the right side of the bike and just handle it like a left-handed person will. That, lady and gentlemen, is the great contradiction haunting this crime scene. The lady of the he said, Lady, gentlemen, and Cap and Francisca. Hey, you're right, pal! That does seem kind of strange! But how could something like that happen? The facts add up to one conclusion and one alone. Someone else put the gun in Mr. Perry's hand after he died. Someone else? Plastic bags scattered on the floor and a gun in the wrong hand. I sense the presence of a shadowy figure behind this case. A person of vile intent who is serious about keeping the truth from us. Okay. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. Here's the autopsy report. It is probable that Mr. Bell survived for a short time after he was shot. I know, this is this is utterly ridiculous. We have to update this autopsy report and staff Francisca. Roger, Miles Edgeworth. Right, I'm on it. And then Francisca, she pulls out like a briefcase filled with their forging tools. What can I use, Miles? Use the ballpoint. We're going to get fancy for once. We're going to treat ourselves with a good pen. However, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously from his stabbing. Interesting. It looks like we now know everything we need to know about this case. Are you sure we know everything? Of course! The incident began with Mr. Faraday attempting to get his revenge. The prosecutor went into a rage on being accused and tried to kill the defendant because he is not perfect like Papa. He was enraged that he could never become as glorious as Papa. But the defendant fought back and they ended up killing each other. It's all very clear and simple. There is absolutely no margin for doubt. Do you really believe that to be the truth? Huh, are you saying that just because I figured out the truth before you? That you don't want to believe it's true? <coughs> it's alright, if you disagree with my argument, then prove me wrong. Well, if there aren't any contradictions to be found, that is. Don't worry, I will. What happened? Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous, while Mr. Rell survived for a short time. From this, it is obvious that Mr. Faraday died after he shot Mr. Rell. And Mr. Rell, while on the brink of death, stole Mr. Faraday's knife and stabbed him. Those are the facts of this case. Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous, therefore he must have attacked first. Yes. Yeah, basically, I just want to make sure. Okay, just want to see. Yeah, as you can see, basically, if he truly died instantaneously, he would have felt he would have basically fallen first. 
Proving that logic to be false is probably the fastest way to show her that she's wrong. In that case, I should first look into any holes in her theory. You just want to make sure I have it. Simply put, all we have to do, I believe... There's a clear contradiction in your line of logic! Well, for one thing, this is a clear line! Because look at the bodies! Look at the way they were found! One body... If if Burn Faraday died... Sec if Burn Faraday died instantaneously, he would have fallen on the ground first. See, like I said, this is the evil of the series. And where, pray tell, would that contradiction be? The thing I just pointed out! Maybe nowhere? Exactly! <clears throat> Could I have been all wrong? At this rate, I'll lose the truth of all eternity! Okay, game over! I need to pay more attention to your testimony! I'm just gonna press everything. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Do you truly believe that Mr. Faraday died in today's day? I have the murder report right here. Mr. Faraday died instantaneously of shock due to being stabbed in the chest. There, you see, it's been documented clear as day. Ah! Mr. Faraday shot Mr. Rell before he died. Do you have any ba basis for that statement? Your foolishness has no end, does it? Now, I hate to repeat myself, however, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously. That's all the bases I need. All right, so if Mr. Faraday died instantaneously, then he must have attacked Mr. Rao before being stabbed. You're finally beginning to catch on, I see. So you believe that the dying Mr. Rao stole the knife from Mr. Faraday? Mr. Rao became desperate as he did not want to die. Human beings can do amazing things when they are put to the test. So the two men struggled. And in the end, Mr. Rell was able to grab the knife and stab Mr. Faraday. The messy condition of this room is a testament to their struggle. Hmm. Yes, my logic is perfectly sound. Can you really say that it's perfect? What are you insinuating? Nothing. However, I can't let what you said slide by without further inquiry. One must be clear and precise. So if you could please amend your sta that statement to your testimony. Fine. Basically, Gumshoe says more. This is what we're going after. Not the fact that if Fairy died first, why would he be the top body? Wouldn't he be the bottom body in that case? Because he'd be the first to fall? Objection. But I'm dealing with Ace Attorney's story progression. You move with the story. The story doesn't move to you. You move to the story. You march to its strum. Not the other way around. If the two men were fighting, the struggle would have surely caused quite a bit of noise. However, Detective Gumshoe testified that he had absolutely nothing. Detective Gumshoe is an oblivious fool! Ha! Huh, you place too much faith in that detective's foolish testimony, you know. But for the sake of argument, let's say that there wasn't a fight. How then did Mr. Rell get his hands on the knife? Mr. Faraday's bag was sitting right down that right here in lobby number two. It is not hard to imagine that perhaps Mr. Rell saw a chance and took it out at some point. So, what you're saying is this. Mr. Rell took a chance when he saw the opportunity and took the knife in the bag. And then Mr. Faraday shot Mr. Rell after being stabbed? Hmm. Isn't there something strange about this statement just now? Wait, something doesn't add up. Oh, really? It simply does not possible for Mr. Faraday to have shot Mr. Rell after being stabbed. Okay. Where's the autopsy report? Take that. There it is. Okay. I, I just get so... It's kind of off because they don't use the actual fo folder for autopsy reports in this game. They just use fr the crime notes. It's, it's kind of off-putting in a sense. It throws you off. According to the coroner's report, Mr. Faraday died instantaneous, meaning that he died immediately upon being stabbed by the knife. Ergo, he could not possibly fire the gun after that. Ooh, you got me! What was that just now? I'm horrible. But of course! Well then, if the report is correct, then there is only one correct explanation. If we support that Mr. Rell attacked first, then Mr. Faraday, who died instantaneously, would have been unable to kill Mr. Rell. Therefore, Mr. Rell must have stabbed Mr. Faraday after you shot. Then they both died. That is the only explanation that makes logical sense. 
negating your opponent's ideas in order to prove your your own theory. I see you've been studying, Francisca. I just want to explain it to you as simply as possible before you foolishly propose a foolish theory that only a foolish fool like you could. Hmm. How naive of you to believe that only your opinions are valid and still expect to discover the truth that the crime scene offers you. Francisca, you do not have your father's finger waggle. I am the one to heir to his smug. Francisca, you still have a ways to go. What are you talking about? Are you saying there's a flaw in my logic? Mr. Faraday died instantaneously, and the fact that he did is what gives rise to the contradiction in this scene. The contradiction here is the in the crime scene is the order of the body fell, of course. I was on that right away. I was saying that right at the start. First thing Francisca said, false. Yeah, we couldn't get that until Edgeworth talked about the gumshoe struggle. We had to make gumshoe relevant. Let me get this straight. What you're arguing is this. Mr. Faraday took the gun from his evidence bag and shot Mr. Rell. Then, the wounded Mr. Rell found an opportunity to take the knife and strike back. Upon being stabbed, Mr. Faraday died on the spot and Mr. Rell died thereafter. If that's the case, then how do you explain this? Take a good look at the order in which the bodies are piled. N no! Mr. Faraday's body is lying on top of Mr. Rell's. Therefore, Mr. Rell must have died before Mr. Faraday. I impossible! Yes, I agree that it seems strange, no matter what angle you approach it from. Which means that the real mystery be behind this crime scene is, is... No, not so fast, Miles Edgeworth! What now? I simply think you ought to think a bit more outside the box. And that's even clearer now that the incident started with Mr. Fairy's mur murderous intent. She shot bounce back quickly. An explanation won't be enough this time. It's going to take some very decisive evidence to prove her role. What happened, part two? It was just chance that Mr. Faraday's body fell on top of Mr. Rell's. The two bodies fell into a pile, which indicates that they attacked each other at the same time. It really doesn't matter in the slice that they fell in the opposite order. I just know that Francisca's explanation isn't absolutely correct. All I have to do is find a hole in her logic. Once I do, I can then present her with the evidence that proves the contradiction. Okay, let's just press. About that. Pressing someone's testimony in order to gain some time to think. You're a real one-trick pony, aren't you? It's too bad your trick only works on fools. Th that wasn't my intent! I simply wish for more details on how Mr. Faraday ended up on top of Mr. Rell. Hmm. Someone's impatient. Someone's impatient? I was just about to explain everything to you. So do you think you could hold on for a, hold on for a minute? Ah! Francisca, I'll make you a deal. I'll hold on if you hold on to that whip of yours. Riding crop, Edgeworth. Why can't anyone see Francisca's riding crop? Oh, I'll hold on to it all right as I whip you. Ah! Well, now that you've quieted down a bit, I'd like to continue if you don't mind. Okay. The two fell on top of each other. Don't you find that to be just a bit strange? Not at all. Ah! I can see it in her eyes. She's dead dead against me from the bottom of her heart. Her cool, dark Von Karma heart. Miles Edgeworth, once I'm done here, you'll see that there's nothing strange at all. Now then, the two men fell into a pile. Oh yes, this one is the burn wounds. And do you mean by they attack- What do you mean by they attacked each other at the same time? I assume Mr. Faraday had the two different weapons in his hands. He was trying to be gangsta. He made- He made to attack Mr. Robo holding both the knife and revolver, and then- after Mr. Faraday fired the gun, Mr. Rell grabbed the knife as he was falling and stabbed Mr. Faraday. That's how Mr. Rell wound up on the bottom with Mr. Faraday on top. At close range, there, that is more than possible. Yes, it's possible, but... Well, if you have any other ideas, then show me what you've got. Oh, I will, and to that extent, I'd like for you to append what you just said in your testimony. Hmm, I don't see any point to that, but as you please... But alas for Francisca, 
She doesn't realize that she's dealing with Edward's greatest weapon, the autopsy report. Oh, Francisco, you fool! You do not realize that you are you are attacking me in my domain, the domain of autopsy reports, which have been updated and amended. So you believe they kill each other at close range? Sorry, but that's impossible. Just as it is written in the crime scene notes, the firing of the handgun did not receive leave a gunpowder burn on Mr. Bell's clothes. Therefore, Mr. Bell and the gun must have been separated by a distance of at least two or three yards. Ah! Uh! Yes, this is by far the biggest contradiction. The two bodies are piled up on each other, yet the gun was fired from a distance. And where there being no chance that Mr. Rell moved that far after being shot, that leaves only one possible explanation. Well, what a completely foolish line of foolishly fool thought from a fool, thoroughly foolish fool. If I'm not right, then who was it that made the first move with the intent to kill? Huh? Who? The person that attacked first with murderous intent, that would be neither man. Here in this room, contradictions appear no matter which man we claim attacked first. Thus, there can be only one explanation. There was a third person here. It was that third person who killed both Mr. Ferdy and Mr. Rell, and set their bodies up to make it look like a double murder. That third person is the real culprit. Miles Edgeworth, there's just one thing you're missing. Evidence, correct? Exactly! Everything you said up until now is nothing but a story played out in your foolish head. However, this is where the real test begins. Can you prove that there was a third person involved in the crime? Of course. If a third person was truly here, that, that fact would resolve the glaring contradiction. The proof that this has all been a setup made to look like I, like they killed each other. I resent it, and lay bare the final piece of the puzzle that's not yet in place. Why is the evidence piece of evidence that proves that there was a third person involved? The gun in Mr. Ferry's hand, and the plastic bag with his blood on it. These two items point to the presence of a third person. How so? Recall Detective Gamshu's testimony. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single beep of a struggle. If there was a struggle in this room, then there shouldn't be any plastic bags on the ground. Mean that someone else must have deliberately scattered them around. Do you not see the possibility in this? Disregarding the gun for a moment. There's a high probability of blood splatter when a knife is used on a person. Ugh, I swear, whenever I eat spicy food for lunch, I just get so gassy. If the culprit held the knife with a plastic bag around it, they could use the bag to catch any blood splatter from when they withdrew the knife. Then by spraying a few more plastic bags around, mixing the body with what? in with one of them, and arranging the room to make it look like there was a struggle between the two, they were able to conceal their presence. Ah! Looks like we've still got a long way to go in this investigation. Yes. And the judge is here! And the judge is looking surprisingly aggro! Look at the judge! He looks like he's gonna get ready to beat- to wh knock someone upside the head! Like he's gonna just sock someone in the jaw! Like, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm gonna fight him! No, no. Mr. Edgeworth, I wanna fight someone! I wanna fight someone, Mr. Edgeworth! I'm tired of being bullied around, Mr. Edgeworth! I'm not gonna be the punching bag anymore! I'm laying down the law! I'm laying down the law with you, Ms. Von Karma! Don't you think I know the future? I know what you do in the future! <laughs> what, what the heck's up with you, pal? Mr. Bad, I advise you to place Detective Gun to our arrest. What? What? Not again! Two times in one game! What's the meaning of this? Ha! Huh, looks like you're not a man enough to discipline your own subordinates. Don't! I'm oh, sorry. Don't you dare. That detective claims he was there, standing by the door the entire time. But I have it on good authority that was all a giant lie. Miss Yu, I asked that you would please explain that last statement. I'll let his owner explain himself. Uh, I saw it with my own eyes, I told you. During the recess, there was a period of time when there was no one in the hallway. What? Say, Mr. Bad. 
So if I ask you, why would a detective who was supposedly doing his job the whole time want to fabricate such a lie? Gumshoe, did you? Did you kill Faraday? Why would I admit to that, pal? Oh yeah, I'm gonna say, yeah, I killed the guy. Really, why do they even ask that? They know they're gonna deny it. But what is Gumshoe gonna say? Yes, pal, I killed the guy. I don't wanna go to jail. N no! Of course not, Sully! Save me, Mr. Edgeworth! <laughs> Save me, pink prosecutor boy! Save me with your logic! It would appear that the only the one who set this whole crime scene up is that detective, which basically renders his testimony a complete lie and wholly invalid. It looks like your perfect lie he has just come tumbling down, Miles. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I did hear bingo people in struggle. Was that statement really a lie? No, still, even if you don't take Gumshoe's statement into consideration it's still obvious that the crime scene was set up in some way detective gumshoe you're now a suspect in the murder of two men now spit out the truth or so help me i will beat you up so the hill with this mirror and i will stick a line lollipop up with a sun don't shine and i will spin it around like a top i i have not lied anyone so i honest i really was there i was really in the hallway the whole time Detective Brad, I ask that you please do not act without my permission. I am your logic god! After all, I am the one that is heading up this investigation, am I not? You think it, right, this could have some, object some objections that don't talk like you know what's going on, boy. Oh, but I do! I know everything that happens in this world! All I want is for this investigation to run perfectly. Perfection is the only wish of a disciple of Von Karma, after all! Therefore, before you take Detective Gumshoe into custody, I'd like to see the records just the record show on something. And what's that? Hmm, what shall I ask Detective Gumshoe about? I suppose the only thing I'd like to clarify is Detective Gumshoe's motive for committing his crime. <laughs> motive? Huh? Look at him. He's destitute. He probably st killed him for five dollars. Gumshoe, you got a grudge against Faraday or anything? He cut my pay only once! Oh, he cut my pay once, and automatically I'm some psycho murder! No, no, sir! Not me, not a single bad thing about Mr. Faraday, sir! Is that a fact? You really have a problem with lying, don't you, Detective Gumshoe? I'm telling you, I am not lying! The more unnatural you act, the more suspicious you become, you know. In that case, everyone in the Ace Attorney universe is suspicious. If you want a motive, Edgeworth, I have one for you right here. Could you please share it with us? However, before we will warn I won't hesitate to object to any flight of fancy. Because I am because all I'm interested in is the perfect explanation. Now you think that Francisca, she would just be so that Edgeworth and Francisca, they would just be they wouldn't even accept this woman's statements for a second on the grounds that she's a defense attorney. I mean, really, they're, they're her... Defense attorneys, after all, defense attorneys are the arch enemy of Avon Karma, the arch, the obstacle of, to perfection. The antithesis of perfection. But then again, with Francisca, if it means beating Edgeworth, she'd accept anyone's help. Because all I'm interested in is the perfect explanation. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're serious, aren't you? Fine. You amuse me, so I'll humor you with a little courtroom practice. It was about a week ago. I saw the detective get chewed out by a living Faraday in front of the precinct. He stood there super pale as Mr. Faraday yelled, That's a salary cut for you, you nitwit! Oh my gosh! I forgot about that! <laughs> Everyone be cutting gumshoe salary! A brand new detective suddenly getting his salary cut. That's reason enough for a grudge. Well, how about that for a perfect explanation? You totally misunderstand me, pal! No matter how mad I get, I can never hold a grudge! Quiet. We can't trust anything you say, you... You animal. You noodling animal. Sorry! 
Hmm. There's nothing wrong with the murder she proposed, per se, but there is some there are some gaps in her knowledge that need to be filled in. Miss Yu's perfect explanation may not be so perfect after all. After all, it did come from Mandrid Karma. Hold it. Hold it. Hold and when was that? A week ago. Then you and Detective Gumshaw are acquaintances. <laughs> No way, I only met him in person today. Like, I'd be hanging around Gumshoe. I actually have a life and a reputation. Then how do you know about Detective Gumshoe? Oh, I've seen him around before. Eating out of a dumpster. Okay, we'll get through the testimony and then we'll end things off. Mr. Faraday was upset. Yeah, you know what else? Mr. Faraday isn't exactly known to get angry often. <laughs> But there he was, only beat me in the face! Ahem. And the offending detective just stood there, pale as a ghost, while, like he was about to die. Just like the face he's making right now, right? Oh, I'm completely inside, tell you. <laughs> yeah, apparently, yeah, yeah, Burton was holding a knife to gumshoe. <laughs> the poor man. <laughs> Ahem. It was quite the scene with the detective. You just stood there watching this unfold in front of you, watching Gamshu cry. Yeah, I had to say it was really enjoyable too. But that's why when I saw Detective Gamshu earlier, I knew to steer clear from him. No way! Though to be fair! In use of fans, Gumshoe always does appear to be that one guy who's plying to just go up to have a, to just shoot up the prosecutor's office or something. Or shoot up the precinct. Literally, it's like Gumshoe, like he has everything solved out. Like the, the reason why Gumshoe takes all his punishment with a smile is he's like, I know I'll get even one day. Oh, oh, how the blood will smell. Oh, that was because I had something stuck on my face! <laughs> but you do that ugliness! Huh, what I got stuck on my face? You're ugly, that's what! Let's out with your eyes, nose, mouth, and those ridiculous eyebrows! Huh? <laughs> oh man, messing with your head is just too much fun! Too much jolly fun! Miss Yu, if you don't mind, I'd like to return to your testimony now. <laughs> sure, why not? Hmm, to cut a new detective salary right off the bat like that. I'm not really familiar with the way you guys relate, but uh, is that common practice? Mm, speaking of cutting my salary, didn't you learn to do that to me earlier too? Yes, it's it's a rite of passage, Gamshu. We have to cut your salary at least once. I suppose I did. Yeah, funny enough though, in the entirety of the series, the only prosecutors who have never cut Gumshoe's salary are... Winston Payne... I mean, Oscar's in the same game as Gumshoe does. Winston Payne, Claudia Gavin, and Godo. That's right, Godo, the guy who killed Maya's mother. He never even sued as low as to cut Gumshoe's salary. I guess he smelled the pity. It's only natural to cut worthless detective salary down to their actual worth. My father can even fire anyone, new or old, with a snap of his fingers. <laughs> Do you think maybe that's the reason not for you detectives for today to hate you people? I hate fun karma. Well, I guess they really shouldn't cut people's pays. Detective Brad! Don't tell me Mr. Von Karma cut your salary earlier! <laughs> yes! <laughs> you call your explanation perfect? <laughs> Is that not to your liking? Unfortunately for you, it's just not to my standards. Oh, is there something you want me to clarify in that case? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Always raise an objection. Alright, if you could clear this one thing up for me. Motive for killing Rel. I understand Detective Gamshu's potential motive for killing Mr. Faraday. However, what about his motive for killing Mr. Rell? His motive for killing Rell? Like I would know. Hmm. If there was no clear motive for both of the murders, then I doubt this incident would have occurred, wouldn't you agree? 
Is there anyone else who might have a, uh, had a grudge against either of the two men? Or shall we look into that ourselves? Oh, in that case, I have absolutely no idea. What? But that's impossible! She must know something! Phew! Wait! <laughs> Can you please not glare at me like that? It makes me laugh! Phew! <laughs> I didn't even do anything and you're already laughing away! Like a loon! Well, anyways, the way I see it, as long as he had a motive to kill one of the two, this crime could have played out the way it did anyways. Oh, why? Would you care to explain your logic? And this time, please try to provide a truly perfect explanation. <laughs> perfect this, perfect that. Stop beta of title. Or is that a the trait for being a volcano? <laughs> yes, it is a trait. Miles Edgeworth, I demand that you shut this rude woman up. She is insulting Papa. I wish you'd both be quiet for just one second. Yeah, before you ask, at this point in your life, for some reason, Francisca just did not want to whip women. It, with her... It, apparently, she... Obviously, she grew out of that. But just, for some reason, just Francisca held back with women in general. Maybe she also held back against children. Ahem. Oh, well, I guess I'll have to explain to you kids. Okay, we'll get through this testimony and then we'll end things off. There's no one out there with a motive to kill both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. All you really have to establish is that someone had a grudge against one of the two men. Mr. Rell, who happened to be there, be became a witness to Mr. Faraday's murder. Therefore, he was killed out of necessity and set up to look like they killed each other. I wonder if that's really true. Is there no one out there with a grudge against both men? I should take another hard look at the evidence for this morning's case. The second KG incident, as people are calling it, involving an embassy staff member, and the two men who both round up as suspects in the case. Is there someone else I'm overlooking who is somehow related to them? We're going to be doing the Yadagarasu. We're going to be going down that road. I'm basically going to press because that's what you do, you make sure. So there's no one else who might have had a grudge against both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. I suppose no one is a bit of a stretch, but I'm pretty sure no one like that was here in this courthouse today. She's lying through her teeth. Well, just saw we just saw uh, someone like that here earlier. Besides, you don't need to prove that the killer had a grudge against both of them. Okay. Oh yeah, it is the first one. Miss Yu, I believe there is someone you overlooked in making your statement, or rather. Is it because you'd rather not bring this person up? What do you mean? Well, I'll answer that question in the next episode, anyways. I really appreciate that you stuck around, stuck around to watch the episode. You're a great viewer. We come back next time. Like, video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever you want. And with that, I'll see you later. Bye.